That's why he's so good. Bounces it outside, has the speed, sees the hole. That's why he's an All-American. Cadillac Williams saves Auburn in triple overtime, 37 to 34. He carried it 40 times, 182 yards, and a couple of touchdowns. And Tommy Tuberville's team much closer than most anticipated. This was not nearly as close as anyone anticipated. Arizona State dropped 65 on Buddy Tevin's team. Andrew Walt, you saw him earlier, 414 yards and five touchdowns. UCLA and San Diego State, 43 to seven. The Bruins take care of business. They committed just three turnovers this season. They had 29 last year and none in this game. That will give you a much greater opportunity to win yes, it would. football games. When we come back, we will run through the three-minute drill. I like to, you got the water ready? I like to spread the field, use my timeouts and the sidelines. We'll also pass out some helmet stickers for the best performances of the day. This little segment we call the three-minute drill. After you start out what happened in the top 25 on Saturday, get you set to vote for a new top 25. Let's go. Spread formation. Let's do it. Number one team's off. Number two team's playing. Texas leading off the three-minute drill against Tulane. 21-0. You know Tulane hasn't scored against Texas in 40 years. Here goes Selvin Young. 71 yards. Here's a touchdown down the sideline. 28-0 Texas. 49-0 would be the final. South Florida and Oklahoma. Nate Hibble looking for Will Peoples. Laying out Oklahoma. Up to beaches old pal Jim Levin, 31 to 14. Florida State and Louisville on Thursday night. Overtime, Florida State with the ball. Chris Ricks. I'm not sure about this call. Oh, wounded the rain. Touched by Anthony Floyd. And that sets up a sudden change, even though it's in overtime. And Louisville on the very next play, Henry Miller for the biggest win in Louisville history, 26 to 20. Louisville beats Florida State last Thursday night, and the goalpost came down at Papa John. Number five, Virginia Tech walking into Waldo Stadium. John Rock stripped by Nathaniel Adibi. Alex Marco Giannakis picking up housework. Virginia Tech, 30 to nothing. Indiana against Ohio State. Reverse! Somebody lost contain. They lost contain to my brother feet. Chris Gamble going to the house. 45-17. The Buckeyes cruise. New Mexico State against Georgia. Kentrell Curry. Hit. That's going to be pick six. Little 78 yards. Tony Samuels team took a 7-0 lead. That was about the end of the good news for them. Georgia's got Alabama coming up next. They roll 41-10. Hockey and Florida. Florida. Of 32-28, and Kiwan Ratliff making the play against Jared Lorenzen, the pick six, Florida. To fight off a game, Kentucky team, 41-34. to Tennessee against the State University of New Jersey, who There's played their guts out. Casey Claus into Kelly Washington, nearly 200 yards receiving. Claus and nearly 300 passing, 35-14. Number 12, Penn State against Iowa in overtime. Brad Banks. Start. C.J. Jones, Puckeyes up by seven. Penn State's chance. Zach Mills trying to set the screen. Didn't get it done. Iowa goes into Happy Valley, 42-35. Idaho and Washington. How about Cody Pickett? What's up with these Pac-10 guys? You know, 74 yards to Charles Frederick. Washington, another win, 41-27. Those numbers for pick 438 yards and three touchdowns, putting up some unbelievable stats. Michigan at Illinois. Nobody uses the tight end like the Wolverines. Oh. Fanny Jopper is going to make good. money in the NFL. 45-28. UMass, North Carolina State. Just about what you would expect. Here. NC State coming with the block punt. Lamont Reed scoring 56-24. Fourth quarter, Washington State and Cal were tied at 38. Jason Gesser to Bart Darling. Dislocated ribbon all. Gesser 431 in the touches. 48-38. Iowa State and Nebraska, Seneca Wallace. Seneca Wallace. Counting for three touchdowns, 36-14. The final, Mississippi State and LSU, the first morning game in Baton Rouge in five years. Dominic Davis, he didn't hit the snooze. That's a nice way to start the game, huh? You gotta wrap him up with your tackle. You gotta bring him down. 31 to 13, the 20th ranked team in the land. Rolls on with a victory in the SEC. Oregon State and USC. Oregon State just doesn't win in the Coliseum. Carson Palmer, Mike Williams, 22 to nothing. Oregon State hasn't won there in 42 years. Number 25, Auburn against Syracuse. Here is the Cadillac. 
carried it 40 times on the night. And in the third overtime, the gamer, 37 to 34, Auburn is victorious. So that is the three-minute drill. We ran through the entire thing, guys. What do you say? You want to pass out some helmet stickers now? Absolutely. I guess Mark, I'll go why don't first. You get cranked up. And I think well, one of the bigger games of the day, Trev. I hate to do this to you, but no, no, don't worry about Iowa me. State. All right. Seneca Wallace, outstanding day. 270 yards total offense by himself. Now, the Nebraska offense only had 273. He does it in the ground. He does it in the air. He's probably the most explosive quarterback out there today in the air and on the ground. Gonna have to borrow this from you. Don't have a player. I'm going to have to split mine in half. Guy Morris, Dan McCartney, two coaches who've taken these programs. I know they lost today, but did you see how they played? The way he's taken his program up to beat Nebraska, these two coaches deserve a half of a sticker. Here's a headgear for you. West Virginia and Avon Coburn. He went for 260 yards against East Carolina in this game today, and he became the Big East all-time leading rusher. He also he passed Amos Zeroway for that honor and tied Zeroway with his 21st 100-yard rushing game. They came into this game the third leading team in the nation in rushing. Rich Rodriguez, no spread anybody. offense. There's That's no, all right. No hands. He can run. He can wear this <laughs> right into the end zone, and he's done it several times. Bino Cook is rejoining us now, and Bino. The Heisman fraternity lost one of its great members this week. Yes, uh, Reese, we would be remiss if we not, did not mention the passing of Leon Hart, who won the Heisman Trophy in 1949. It's amazing how many people said, hey, he was an end. Did he play offense or defense? He went both ways. And that's the way football was played in those days. He played on the great Notre Dame teams after World War II. Somebody once asked him, what did Frank Leahy say after he lost the game? And Leon, Leon Hart scratched his head and said, I don't know. We never lost a game. In four years, and freshman played in 1946, he did not play in a losing game. In fact, his first two years at Notre Dame, they were never behind. In four years, Notre Dame won three national titles, and the fourth year, which was his junior year, they finished second in the country. They had a tie with USC 14-14. Won every game except two, and those were ties. Of the first 16 Heisman Trophy winners, only three are left. Glenn Davis won the Heisman Trophy in 46. Doc Blanchard won it in 45. And Johnny Lujak of Notre Dame won it in 1947. I'm getting old, and I don't like it. Reese. Bino, you're only as old as you feel, and you feel pretty young most days. Thanks a lot. Talk to you in a bit. Bino Cook joining us. Some nice memory. Our condolences to the family as well. We will continue on the College Game Day scoreboard with our BCS projection. Who is headed for Tempe? We'll tell you. Ahead on Sports Center, the Giants look to lock up playoff spot. It's a wild Saturday in college football, and the latest on the condition of Cincinnati coach Bob Huggins. Join me, Steve Berkum, and Kenny Main, Sports Center, 10 Pacific on ESPN. Back on the College Game Day scoreboard, Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, Kirk Herb Street, joining us now. Well, entering Saturday, there were 14 eligible teams in the BCS conferences who came in as undefeated. Some of them went down today. I don't think there's a major shock here. I mean, the Florida State game was a, was a surprise, certainly in Thursday night, but I don't know if any of these teams were given a great chance to run the table. Most disappointing performance in there, I'd have to say Oregon State. Thud against USC. Yeah. What's the lingering image of today? Ames, Iowa, would you say? Well, yeah, to me it was. It's really two things. Thursday night and tonight. Florida State, Nebraska, two of the best football programs in the last 20 years, are both heading in this direction. In this direction. And if they don't do something quick, both of them, I'm telling you, it's going to be a very disappointing season for both those guys. They don't have the talent they have. They don't look like they're playing as well as they should. Yo, they got problems. Yeah, the panic button is being pushed right now in Lincoln because think about it. They had two weeks to get ready for this football game. Everybody knew what was at stake. Everybody was even expecting Iowa State to be able to pull off this victory. And for them to go in and be dominated up front in the trenches by Iowa State, they now have two losses. They're at Kansas State, at A&M, and Texas still on their schedule. Nebraska's looking at potentially five losses this year, which would be the most since 1961. 
They're one-dimensional on offense. They can't run on defense. It's not going to get better by giving great effort. This is just a lack of speed right now on this Nebraska team. Mind-boggling. They couldn't get a first down or sustain a drive. Not just the loss, but how they looked. Halloween 1981, the last time the poll came out and Nebraska was not in there. At long streak ends. Yeah. Very quick individual heroes today. Thursday night, Dave Ragone, University of Louisville, the best football team that school's ever beaten. Beyond Seneca Wallace, who stepped up and, and led his team to a big victory. I thought the Michigan performance, John Navarre going on the road, and even though it was Illinois, just to be able to regain his confidence, I think will help Michigan in the big picture down the road. And Avon Coburn for West Virginia. People oh, are not wow. talking about that, that team at all. Right. That was a monster Not's day on problem. the ground for the Mountaineers Good running day. back. Reese? Doing the best I can. I gave you my helmet sticker. You know, here are BCS projections right now. We've got the Big East teams at the top, Miami and Virginia Tech. Of course, those teams are going to play each other, and it's very tight here at 3 through 6. About a point and a half separating them is coming from our BCS guru, Brad Edwards. I can't wait to see Georgia go down to Alabama. Alabama plays very good up front defensively. If they stop the run, can David Green lead that to, to victory? Tell you what, we've had a fa fabulous weekend. Started Thursday night with Louisville's upset of Florida State, wrapped up with Auburn's triple overtime win over Syracuse on the Family Network. We'll see you.